Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and we are coming to you from the Business Radio X studio. Well, not really in Renaissance Bank, folks. You know that. We're virtual in uh, uh, the virtual Business Radio X studio in Alpharetta, but we are we love Renaissance Bank and the folks and the great work that they are doing there. And you need to be in touch with them if you certainly if you are not aware of some of the SBA loan programs that are available in this time of COVID-19 crisis. Uh, if you're not aware, and I can't believe anybody's not aware as much as has been out there, but if you're not, uh, be in touch with your friendly Renaissance banker. If you are aware and need help, be in touch with your friendly Renaissance banker, and uh, but do not go to the branch without an, out an appointment. They are closed. The front door is locked, but they are inside, and they are happy to take an appointment and, and welcome you in at, at six feet worth of distance, and, and they can help you at six feet worth of distance. So check them out. Uh, give them a call. Make an appointment or go to renaissancebank.com and get more information and updates there. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. And now we've got three great guests today. We've got uh, uh, Ford Stokes and Brandy Seats, and they're with Active Wealth Management. And also we've got Morgan Reynolds, and she's with Collier's International. But first, we're going to start uh, the show with Ford Stokes and Brandy Seats. They are with Active Wealth Management. Ford, Brandy, welcome. Hey, John. Thanks for having us. Great to have. Yeah, we're happy to be here. Great, great to have both of you on. Uh, so um, let's start with just give the overview. Tell us a little bit about Active Wealth Management. What do you do? How do you help folks? Well, John, first of all, it's great to be with you. Um, I had a quick question. Renaissance Bank, they are they can do drive through banking for deposits and that's withdrawals a, and stuff like that. That's right. thank you for mentioning that. And they, they yes, at any time they can do uh, drive through. So uh, you just got some points from Renaissance for that. Uh, no, for, I, I seriously was curious. <laughs> yeah, um, we we've been looking to look at our own bank banking partner as well, and so mm-hmm. um, I appreciate that. It's good to know that renaissance out there for all of us business owners. We appreciate it. Absolutely. So active wealth management, we're a private wealth management firm. Um, it means a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Bottom line is we try to help folks invest fee efficiently, market efficiently, and tax efficiently. And all three of those things are very important. You really shouldn't be overpaying in advisory fees and portfolio fees these days. Also with market efficiency should be much more of a conservative position but also stay slightly invested so you can enjoy the bounces that we've had in the last week and a half. Um, And then obviously you, you need to be tax efficient and there's some hints on here that we'll, we'll talk to folks today about, about how to do a Roth IRA conversion uh, to potentially beat the tax man a little bit and um, get more tax efficient with your portfolio. But we've been, I've been in the business over 15 years. I used to be a former owner of a $3 billion registered investment advisor, which can be a person or a company in that since it was a company. Mm-hmm. Uh, that company's name was Formula Folio Investments. So we're the number 10 fastest growing company on the Inc. 5000 list and it sold out in 2017, allowed us to start active wealth management. Been very fortunate to add Brandy Seats um, to our team as an advisor. We've got a team of support folks and, and fiduciaries and Brandy Um, leads our Kennesaw, Georgia office and our Cartersville, Georgia offices. And I'm out of our perimeter office in the King and Queen building. Although I'm not today, obviously we're sheltering in place here um, at our home in coming Georgia Mm -hmm. um, with twin 13 year old girls. And we would encourage everyone to try that. Um, (laughs) So that's basically us in a nutshell, but we've, we've been fortunate to help folks with safe income, college planning, health insurance, Medicare supplements, and then obviously with private wealth management. You know, nothing will make you good at, uh, or, or give you an incentive to get good at financial planning, like 
twins, right? So right, you, right. You, <laughs> we're going to be at this thing a while. They're competitive cheerleaders. So, oh my, uh, that sport is expensive. So we'll be doing private wealth management for at least the next quarter century. Well, we always love people to eat their own cooking. So you, <laughs> that's great. That's great, Ford. Um, uh, you've got a big incentive to get it right for sure. Um, you know, one of the things you mentioned, I'm curious about it for either of you, what you talked about the, the issue of fees and that's controversial with clients. Um, I think sometimes advisors pit themselves against each other sometimes, but you really hit on something I think is important because fees make a big difference in your long-term returns. And that's kind of what you're getting at, right? Right. And I'll, I'll let Brandy follow on with this because she's passionate about this subject too. A couple things. One is one hint that I would share with folks is you really should understand what your expense ratio is because those are fees within your portfolio that don't necessarily show up in your statement. Mm -hmm. So in your expense ratio, it, it generally it, it coincides with mutual funds, right? Mm -hmm. So with mutual funds, you've got 12B1 fees, which are marketing fees that the mutual fund companies charge. And none of us have ever see, seen a mutual fund billboard or a television ad. That's just money that those mutual fund companies doesn't make them bad people. That's just their business model. They take those marketing funds that was made available by the Investment Act of 1940, and they put those into their pocket and doesn't really benefit the investor, whether from an educational perspective or an investment perspective. Um, also, there's A share fees and C share fees. We try to invest in exchange traded funds or ETFs, and that allows us to be much more efficient and allows us to do sector rotation in what we believe are going to be the sectors that are going to do the best performing over the next three, six, 12, 18 month period. And so we try to get more fee efficient on the internal fees within the portfolio. And if any of your listeners have never actually got understood what their expense ratio is, we provide a portfolio analysis absolutely for free for folks. So we mm -hmm. help there. Mm -hmm. And then the other to be more specific on advisory fees and portfolio management fees, usually those are combined. And those range from anywhere from like 0.75 up to over 2%. A lot of the larger firms, uh, their business model is in that higher end of those the range. And ours is more towards the, the middle and the lower end, depending on how much money you invest with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would add to that um, the 0.75 to 2% when you are kind of shopping for an advisor, look at what they're providing you. You know, all advisors are, are different. We all have a different model. Um, so your 0.75 to 1%, usually that's a passive investment strategy. Uh, they're passively man managing it. So they're not really actively doing a lot there. The higher you get, you're kind of looking at maybe more tactical um, and there's a big difference there. So if any of the listeners would kind of like to learn some more about that, we have lots of ways to share some insight about that. And then you have safe money investments like principal protected IRAs that there's no there's no advisory fee for. So it's zero percent. And those those are also not invested in the market and right. still mm. to a reasonable rate of return. Some we can even right now, believe it or not, John, we've got um, those protected IRAs. We've got we get or they're offering 10 percent bonuses because they're a little bit of a, of a grab of a land grab right now. Um, and so it's, it, we're happy to help folks any way we can um, help them really, if they're concerned and don't have peace of mind about what's going on with the pandemic and the, the world economy being an idol right now, we'd love the opportunity to help them protect their retirement nest egg. Um, yeah. I want to get into that. Uh, but I'll, Brandy, I want to unpack something you referenced, which I thought was really important is that there's, there's more value that financial advisors provide than just investing assets and, you know, helping select those assets, et cetera. I mean, they're, they're things like just right. having a conversation, right. Particularly in, in a, in a time when the market is crazy and uh, to say the least, and just yeah. being able to have a, a conversation and know you're available, right. Yeah. So a consultation with an advisor shouldn't, you know, really cost you anything. Um, it's just a conversation. So all of my conversations with new clients um, or prospective clients start with getting to know them. Um, and as a fiduciary, we we have to do that. We have to give advice that um, that best 
suits that individual. And we can only do that once we get to know them and their current situation. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, we'll have clients that, oh, I invest or I manage my own IRA. I don't need to work with an advisor. Well, what about college planning or legacy planning or estate planning? And what's your wife going to do if something happens to you? And what's your plan for your children? And are you invested in a 529 plan or an IUL, which one gives you the most tax benefits? So, you know, this is our profession. Um, I know how to change my oil, but I don't do it because I'm not going to be the best at it. Um, so working with a professional in that industry is really uh, beneficial to you in the long run, especially a fiduciary. You know, we are required to provide advice that is in your best interest. So why wouldn't you want, you know, another team member on your side? Absolutely. Uh, folks, if you just joined us, we're speaking with Ford Stokes and Brandy Seats, and they are with Active Wealth Management uh, here in the metro Atlanta area, several offices here in Atlanta. Um, so, Ford, you mentioned the recent market declines, and I know everyone's thinking my 401k just turned into a, you know, the old joke about turning into a 201k, right? Um, right. Here just instantly in the last two months. What advice are you giving folks right now? Generally, uh, we know you can't recommend. We'll, we'll put, let's put that out there. You can't recommend specific assets. So I'm going to give you that uh, uh, disclosure that you have to give. But what, what kind of general thoughts do you have for folks that are that are suffering right now with yeah, portfolio obviously value? We would encourage you to sit down with a professional financial advisor that's Series 65 licensed a fiduciary. Feel free to call our office if you if you wanted to you can always reach us by just visiting activewealth.com mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yes absolutely here's what I would recommend if you have been an aggressive investor the last 11 years where there's been a big run up and you lost 20 or 30 percent during the market downturn and it came back maybe 10 percent so you're down like 20 percent I would consider I would ask you to consider rebalancing to a more conservative position. And what I mean by more conservative position, I mean 20% securities, 80% investment grade bonds with, you know, that are triple A rated bonds that you've got an understanding they're going to, you're going to get paid back and you're going to get the income on those bonds. Um, also, you might want to take a portion of your entire 401k, say a 20 or 40% bond replacement and put that into something like a fixed index annuity where there's zero advisory fees, you can get a bonus and they're paid and they're, they're with companies that are over a hundred years old that are highly rated carriers that have to reserve at a solvency rate of a hundred, hundred pennies for every hundred pennies you give them versus an FDIC Renaissance bank, great bank, but FDIC rules, mm -hmm. just, you know, FD, FDIC rules are that they have between three and 10% reserve. Mm-hmm. For Brandy and myself, we feel more confident in working with companies that have to be re legally required to reserve a hundred percent of their assets. Right. And the reason why, you know, you're you're probably asking, okay, mix and and investments, what should we do? If you're still in service with that company, I would just rebalance to a more conservative position and make sure you're investing in lower expense ratio options that are in your investment options and also try to get in more income based. But if you if separated or you've got old IRAs or anything like that, I would encourage you to work with a financial advisor and consider investing into fixed index annuities. And if you click the set an appointment button in the upper right corner of activewealth.com or activewealthshow.com, we're happy to help you and you get booked right into our calendar. Um, I would encourage you to do that because also there's zero advisory fees with a fixed index annuity because the, the annuity company pays the advisor mm -hmm. and, and it, you're also, your money's not invested in the market. And so you're, you've got principal protected for a portion of your assets and that gives better peace of mind for folks. So probably a different answer than you were expecting, John, mm. but these are diff difficult and different unprecedented times. Right. And I want to, I'm going to share a quick athlete story. Maybe Brandy can share a different one. But Babe Ruth, during the Great Depression, did not lose a single dollar. You may or may not know that. Really? Yeah. So from 1921 to 1927, Babe Ruth's manager in 1921 got very concerned. He was blowing through all his money in New York bars. 
<laughs> that I can believe. <laughs> right. And so he was very concerned about that. So what he did is he introduced him to an agent or an advisor with Equitable Life Insurance Company. Mm. He invested in fixed annuities starting in 1921. He literally invested 50% of his salary from 1921 to 1927. And when he retired in 1935, after the 1929 crash, where we had 25% unemployment, from 1935 to his death, he he received $17,500 on average per year from his annuities. And that equals about $290,000 today. Wow. Per year. That pays for a lot of beer. It does. And, yeah. and a lot of groceries, right? And, <laughs> and uh, your Instacart order and other things, right? Sure. And so I would encourage folks to consider doing something that's remarkable, doing something that is different. Because I promise you, baseball players of in the Great Depression era were not investing 50% of their salary into fixed annuities. Right. But but Babe Ruth's agent did not want to be the guy that that was over the greatest baseball player to ever live at the time. I'm I'm a partial to Hank Aaron, but me too. Being, you know, being an Atlanta guy, right? Right. But I will tell you that he did something remarkable and different. And I would encourage you right now. It it takes an exceptional performance on the on your financial side to protect and grow your assets. And you've got to do something. You can't just hang in there and hope is not a strategy. I promise you that. Mm. Mm. Brandy. Brandy's got a, a story on a younger guy. I'm the old guy. So I had to share the old guy story. Yeah, okay. I mean, if you, if you want another example, we yeah. use these in one of our webinars, you can actually find on our um, Facebook page and we kind of dive deeper into all these questions and answers we've given. Um, but Steve Young was another example. So Steve Young um, signed a contract for a $40 million annuity right out of Brigham Young University. And that was with the USFL. Mm -hmm. That's what the headlines told us was that this young kid just got $40 million basically. Well, in reality, it was a, it was a annuity that would pay out $40 million over the next 50 years. Um, so it's safe to say that Steve Young probably made more money than anyone else involved in the league um, and really made a great choice there and protected himself and his family um, by accepting that offer um, and to have it paid out in an annuity. And when we talk about pro athletes, it's so common that we see poor wealth management um, just because, you know, maybe it wasn't taught to them when they grew up. I know nobody taught me when I was growing up. Um, or, you know, they just get stuck in this lavish lifestyle and then they retire and they're broke. So it's really great when Ford and I find these these fun, positive stories about those that were financially disciplined. For sure. For sure. Folks, if you just joined us, we're speaking with Ford Stokes and Brandy Seats there with Active Wealth Management. Now, I know we, we talked about saving for college. Uh, those plans just got turned upside down by a lot of for a lot of folks. What advice do you give for college savings plans at this point? Well, that's a great point. So we we partnered with a company that they've they've helped forty thousand families pay wholesale for college versus paying retail, and we're pretty sure that wholesale is a better level to pay for college than retail. Um, and so we work with folks on an individual basis. We help them with filling out their FAFSA forms and, and getting everything ready, but also figuring out what, you know, which college works best for their, for their child. Who's and also based on the major and all those kind of things. Also there, there are corporate money out there. There is corporate money out there um, for scholarships, but people don't understand that a vast majority of college funding is provided by the colleges themselves. And so you've got to do a great job through that entire process. And so it is a process. So our advice would be to give our office a call and we can help you with a consultation, um, a free initial consultation. And then there's a service that this company provides. They've done an incredible job. 40,000 students is un unbelievable wow. over the last 15 years. Yeah. And so, and we're, we're like the exclusive North Fulton, like everything north of I-20 basically is in our territories. Mm. And so we're very fortunate to be partnered with them. 
and we'd love to help families. A lot of families are really are reeling a little bit. It may not be the folks that are seniors because believe it or not, John, the FAFSA process got moved to October versus it used to be January. Mm-hmm. And if that had happened in January or later, it really would have been incredibly problematic. Mm. But most people are already selected and ready to go. In fact, my niece um, it, who attends Cherokee High School in Cherokee County, she got accepted into Georgia and they're they're talking about doing a virtual orientation in early June. Oh, wow. So already a lot going on Mm. in that area, but Mm -hmm. the, the people that have been hit the worst are the ones who have elementary and school and middle school age, and even ninth and 10th graders age kids where their 529 accounts look like 329 accounts, the old (laughs) joke to your point earlier. Right. And some of that's a buy and hold strategy, but it, will it come back in time enough? Um, that's a big concern. Mm. And I would tell you that principal protection is more important. As Mark Twain said, listen, I'm much more concerned about the return of my principal than the return on my principal. And I would encourage you to protect your principal and get into more conservative positions now, even if it means moving into money market and being out of the market right now. It's something to consider because you've got to protect that nest egg because kids are going to go to college. I'm fairly confident that colleges are not going to be offering deep discounts. Um, and so no, they're, they're, they're growing at 6.2% a year for the last 20 years. Yeah. They're not known as being really uh, charitable in that regard, are they? <laughs> not so, altruistic. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, this has been great. I I want to make sure, though, before we let you go, that we uh, get out there the kind of clients that you're you you work with. I mean, obviously, you mentioned college savings and for folks that 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 have that concern. But what kind of clients are good fits for you at Active Wealth Management? Yeah, I'm gonna let Brandy take a lot of this too. I okay. I would just say anyone uh, we work with basically three big core types of people. We work with pre retirees. And they are parents of college age kids too, or people are high school age and middle school age kids. Then we work with retirees who are within two years or past uh, and they're already retired. And then we work with business owners and all three of those groups of people, but specifically the retirees and the business owners, they all have one thing in common. And that is they need one check to last them the rest of their lives. Hmm. And we take that very seriously. Mm -hmm. And so if you have got that nest egg that you absolutely don't know what to do right now with it, we're happy to help you. And we'll have a conversation for you for free on the front. And we do that, John, so that people can make an informed financial decision. So they're not just guessing and they're not just winging it. We also give a free portfolio analysis and we give a free financial plan between now and when they turn 95 years old. And we feel like, that's a better way to do things than a lot of advisors will charge on the front end. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll charge like 1500 to $10,000 for a financial plan. And we think that folks may not have confidence in those financial plans if they're trying to get their commissions on the front end. We're willing to work hard for it throughout the process. And, um, and we only get paid advisory fees when we manage money. And the better we do for the client, the more our flat fee will continue to grow and we're kind of aligned with our clients. So those are, that's really the the perfect type of client that we like to work with are really those pre-retirees and retirees and business owners. But Brandy, I'd, I'd love to get your input on this as well. Yeah. So those are definitely probably the three most common um, buckets that our clients kind of fit in. And that's usually when somebody's looking for an advisor uh, because at that point they need it, you know, mm-hmm. they're, they don't really know exactly what that means or how to make that happen. Um, but Warren Buffett said, someone's sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. So I share that to say it is never too early to start planning. Um, and the longer time horizon you have, the more successful you're going to be in the long run. So, you know, you're, you're 20, you're not too young to start investing. You're 30, 40, especially when you have a family. And we just talked some about college planning. Um, so, college planning, planning for your children's future, protecting yourself, um, you know, with life insurance based things to ensure that your family's okay. All of those things are very important. We work with people in those demographics as well. Um, But most 
most commonly we're working with pre-retirees and retirees because again, that's that's just when you don't really have a choice. You got to find somebody to kind of help you through that. But the more prepared you are, the better. Well, this has been great and uh, we could go on, but I want to um, make sure that we get uh, contact information out for those that would like to be in touch. Uh, you've said something that's uh, hit, hit a hot spot for them or rung a bell. They would like to have a conversation, have that free consultation you talked about. Brandy, tell them how they can do that. Yeah, you can visit our website, activewealth.com. Uh, there's a set an appointment button in the upper right-hand corner, and that will allow you to set an appointment right into my and Ford's calendar. Or you can give us a call, our number is 770-685-1777. Um, you can text us there too. And we also have a radio show, Active Wealth Show. Uh, you can check it out at activewealthshow.com. And that just kind of allows you to get to know Ford and myself a little bit better, our investment strategies and personalities, if you're not quite ready to um, to set an appointment. But if you are, we can do appointments uh, via Zoom, or I can do them in person at my Kennesaw and Cartersville office, you know, as long as we keep a safe distance. But right. our, our king and queen building office in Sandy Springs. We're in the king building. Um, and that is closed because you know, it's a large office complex with lots of people. Of course, of course. But as, as things recover, people know where to go find you for sure. So, um, one way or the other, hopefully they'll uh, reach out. They'll be able to get in touch with you and Brandy, uh, seats, Ford Stokes, active wealth management. Uh, it's great. Been great to have you. Thank you. Thank you, John. We appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Thank so yeah. Thank you. Folks, if you need some help that involves other kinds of headaches, that involves administrative tasks, bookkeeping, marketing, pr some presentations done, uh, maybe you need a little Zoom training, uh, well, go engage a smart and reliable office angel. And they've been working virtually since the very beginning, folks. Uh, they're not a temp agency or a placement firm. Office Angels matches your business support needs with angels who fly in with, with the talent and experience necessary to help you maintain and grow your business. Your terms, your timeline, they lend a hand when needed and fly off when the job is finished. Find out more at officeangels.us or call Chief Executive Angel S.E. Escobedo at 770-442-9246. I strongly encourage you to contact S.E. She is awesome and terrific. I work with her, and she's fantastic. Um, now we welcome Morgan Reynolds. Morgan is with Colliers International. Morgan, welcome. Thanks, John. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here. So, uh, tell us a little bit about you and uh, Colliers International. How do you help businesses? Yeah, so again, I'm Morgan Reynolds, and I work with Colliers International. Um, Colliers is a full-service commercial real estate firm. We have over 400 locations around the world. I specifically help companies lease office space. Um, more specifically in North Fulton, I'm an Alpharetta resident, and I really focus my practice on the North Fulton market. But um, in terms of how we help companies with office space, it could be relocation, it could be a renewal and expansion, consolidation, or for some of our larger clients, we manage their office portfolio around the world. So um, the kinds of companies that we work with can vary from, you know, your startup to your Fortune 500. Um, but, you know, right now we're obviously going through a tough time and we're helping a lot of companies figure out this, um, you know, this pandemic and how, how they can make it through with rent relief and those types of things. Sure. And, and we're going to get into that. Um, but, uh, the question about Colliers, I mean, the, the thing about Colliers is you, y'all have got experience across a lot of different markets, a lot of different, um, uh, angles, I guess, as it were, um, on commercial real estate that people can benefit from the experience that you bring to the table. I mean, you're bringing a, uh, when you sit across the table from a business owner, you're bringing a whole lot of, uh, firepower. Most definitely. That's a good point. And, um, you know, Colliers, we do have a global presence, but we're also locally owned. So, um, our partners have a share in our Atlanta office. And so we're very, invested in the community and have a real stake in, um, you know, local businesses and companies 
In addition to that, you know, I work on a team with four other partners, each of which all bring something unique to the table. Um, you know, one of our guys, Bob Ward, he brings experience with corporate solutions. So he's managing portfolios of up to 200 offices. Um, we have the local knowledge of local markets, but we also can lean on some of that broader experience around the world and our different experts in certain markets to really, you know, provide our clients the best in class service. And that's pretty important to have in this environment when, you know, it's a lot of uncertainty. I mean, none of us ever, ever been in an environment like this. Um, so you really want the experience and the depth of what you have to offer, I would think. Um, but let's talk a little bit about, uh, the, you know, the COVID-19 impact. What are you seeing right now, uh, in the market out there, particularly here in North Fulton? Yeah, in terms of deal flow, you know, a lot of our deals that were on the goal line, of course, those are moving forward. Um, but if things were just, you know, if company was looking to open a new location or were just, they were just starting their search for space or maybe plan on expanding, those have all been kind of put on hold. Mm. Everyone's in this sort of wait and see mode. And, you know, like you mentioned, it's it's an unprecedented time. So there's no playbook. We're kind of taking it day by day and week by week. And, um, you know, that's the same with landlords in terms of rent relief. So, you know, we're, we're helping companies try to figure this out. We're, um, we're all kind of in this together. I think that's been a big message. And, and rent relief. So that's, that's, an issue. You hear a lot of discussion about that, a lot of pros, a lot of cons. Um, how are you helping your clients with rent relief? Yeah. So of course, you know, this pandemic has impacted every single industry, it seems like. And so our, you know, same goes with our, with our clients. They're in a wide variety of industries and some are more impacted than others, but I think the biggest message that we can advise companies and tenants as they're requesting rent relief and trying to figure out how they're going to pay their rent, I think it's important to communicate early and often with your landlord. Um, the more transparent you can be about where your business is, is at, the more likely um, they're going to be willing to work with you. I think the responses have been across the board in terms of how landlords are helping their tenants get through this. It could be in the form of rent deferral, rent abatement in some cases, um, you know, rent abatement with an extension to the lease term um, or, you know, just total forgiveness. I think the responses have varied and then other larger entities are saying, Hey, there's, you know, we're struggling too. We need you to pay your rent. So um, communication is the biggest thing that I would say these landlords are what they want to see that there's been a significant impact in your business. Um, you know, they don't want tenants coming to them, just trying to take advantage of a situation. They want to know that you've applied for stimulus. Mm -hmm. They want to know that you've made changes to your operation to try to help with some of that cash flow. Um, so there's a variety of variety of ways to approach it and there's no, black or white answer on how a landlord's going to respond, but, you know, have the conversation, keep the discussion open. And of course, um, reach out to your broker or me. Um, we're, we're glad to help navigate, help you navigate those discussions. This is where having an intermediary really helps, right? Because you don't know all the answers. You're sitting here with your hair on fire because your business is, um, you know, in the tank suddenly, you know, nothing that you did. It's just all of a sudden here it comes. And this is where having someone that's, uh, um, uh, got experience to be able to make suggestions that you might not have thought of is really important. Definitely. I think, you know, the experience in talking to a ton of landlords over the past several weeks has been beneficial. We've been able to come up with creative solutions of how, Companies can get through this time and landlords can continue to pay their lenders um, that are obviously 
been impacted too. So definitely the experience helps. And, you know, this is not something that we anyone planned for. Um, you know, this is a very big time suck for a lot of people. And for us, it's our job mm-hmm. um, to help companies with these types of issues. So it's not, you know, this is a free service to tenants and we want to help in any way that we can. And so, um, you know, as a company, don't take this on yourself. Like, let us help with those discussions. Let us reach out to your landlord on your behalf and um, get these discussions going and hopefully get some rent relief and until things turn around. Folks, we're speaking with Morgan Reynolds, and she is with Colliers International. Morgan, I, I know that this is a, an unfair question because, you know, we, we didn't know this was going to happen three months ago. But, uh, I mean, how do you – assess how the work environment is going to change uh, in in the post-pandemic world. Uh, God help us get there fast. Yeah, hopefully that's sooner than later. But right. that's, that's a good question. And it's something that a lot of companies are thinking about. It's what we're thinking about in the office industry is, you know, how will this pandemic impact the workplace? Will more people work from home? You know, how is it working? Are people productive? And, you know, that's a big question. And I will say, you know, from the financial crisis in 2008, we noticed a lot of companies moving towards this more dense office. They had to do more with less. Um, You saw a rise in co-working with WeWork. And these are very small spaces. And you're averaging a lot smaller square footage per employee, which at this time is it's not a good thing, you know, that's spreading germs. And um, so, you know, it's hard to say long-term what this will mean for the workplace, but I think that will be a trend is the move away from density or restructuring offices to where you're spreading, spreading out your employees more. Um, I think, you know, this whole work from home environment, it's tough for a lot of people with kids. I know Ford mentioned, he has two twins at home and it's tough with any age kid to work at home. You know, you got dogs barking and kids screaming. I know I've heard some on some zoom calls. We're all navigating that, <laughs> but um, I think companies are realizing, you know, maybe when things are turned back to normal, our employees can be productive at home. They can, you know, work from home two days a week, save time on commute. Um, so I think there might be a trend towards, more working from home policies versus, you know, you're required to be in the office all day, every day. So that could be a shift. I I think so. Yeah, that makes sense. I want to make sure that folks understand maybe that we're looking to expand or looking to move. We get some words to them in terms of what you're uh, telling them to do right now. I mean, you, you mentioned the folks that are, were at the goal line that kind of went, went ahead and did the deal, uh, that they had in front of them. But what about those folks that, uh, you know, were, were looking and now all of a sudden they don't know what they want to do. What are you telling them? That's a good question. So, you know, like I mentioned before, a lot of companies are in this wait and see mode, you know, we'll, will things be back to normal in three months or will they be back to normal in six? You know, when will this pandemic be clear and, you know, return to the new normal? And it's hard to say. And so I think a lot of short-term solutions have been um, popular. So, you know, the one or two year renewal until you can really assess the true impact of the pandemic on your business. Mm -hmm. um, That's been a common theme. You know, we're working with landlords to discuss, you know, rates and, you know, how how they can get some relief in the next couple of years. You know, what are we don't even know what rates are going to do. So I think the short term solution is a short term renewal. It's, um, you know, let's revisit this in six months or a year when we've um, somewhat recovered or we at least can make a longer term decision about where we want to be and how our business is going to grow. 
Uh, that sounds like awesome advice uh, from Morgan Reynolds, uh, Colliers International. Morgan, this has been great. Um, lo- lots of great insight in in a really short period of time, and I think people sounds like they need to be in touch with you. So tell them how they can do that. Yeah, and again, thanks for having me, John. And we're glad to help. We're glad to be a resource. Um, if you want to find out more information about Colliers or even um, you know, how it's, in, or how this impact, how this pandemic is impacting real estate, you can go to our website at www.colliers.com. Um, you can reach me through my cell phone, which is 770-231-4503 or shoot me an email. And that is morgan.reynolds at colliers.com. So we're, we're here to be a resource, help you with discussions with your landlord or, or anything else relating to real estate. Sounds great. Morgan, thanks for being with us. Thanks, John. So folks, just a reminder, you can listen to this show on every Tuesday morning, live at 1130. And if you have uh, any of your favorite podcast apps on your phone, you can find us there. That might be Apple. It might be Google. It might be TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, Overcast happens to be my favorite. Um, I keep t- uh, pointing out how Overcast is great, but they never send me a, like endorsement money. But anyway, I'll maybe I'll quit talking about them. <laughs> but uh, but but seriously, folks, we're on all the major podcast apps, so I have yet to be challenged on anyone we can't be found on. Um, but you can also find us on NorthFultonBusinessRadio dot com. Check out our archive of shows there. We're up to two hundred and seventeen or eighteen or something like that going on 500 guests we've had over four years. So we've got quite an archive of business leaders like uh, Ford and uh, Morgan and Brandy that you can uh, check out there. Uh, We're also on social media. So connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, North Fulton, BRX on all three of those platforms. So for my guest, Morgan Reynolds from Colliers International, uh, Brandy Seats and Ford Stokes from Active Wealth Management. I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio.